Hello my fellow scientists. Today I want to take you through a little project about headphones. This is not sponsored. There's no uh, no Bluetooth headphone premium brand that I'm going to be hawking. It's a little project that I've done a couple times where I have used silicone earplug material to make custom earbuds that actually fit in my ears. I have odd ear shapes, I guess, and so most earbuds just fall out or hurt or both. And so I found the solution, so I'm gonna share it. The easy way is to cram some of this earplug material around an earbud and just mash it into your ear. And that actually worked really well. So I'll show that, it takes like two minutes to demonstrate and you can try it if you want. Uh, for your amusement, I also tried a much more complicated method <laughs> and, and it was terrible, it was absolutely terrible. And uh, my cat has decided to join us. So thank you for that support. Um, yeah, so if you want to watch me embarrass myself trying to complicate a totally fine method uh, and failing to make it better, stay tuned to the end. So I bought this two-part silicone custom molded earplug material. And you can see the package there on the left. This material comes in two little containers. We're gonna open those up and we're gonna divide each part into four. It only takes about a fourth of what they give you to make one pretty good earbud. I do that by dividing it in half twice. There's the blue part. It also comes with a white part. Do the same thing with the white part and I have equal parts blue and white. Those are going to be mixed. I like to mix those by mm, pressing them together and folding them over, pressing them flat and folding over again until I get a nice homogeneous light blue. You can tell that you're not quite done if you can still see blue or white streaks in the material. I make a big mass of it and try to get any obvious fold lines out and then wrap that around the earbud. Now I've come up with a couple of little tricks when I'm doing this. One, I try to avoid the end of the earbud, the part where the sound comes out, but if I get a little on there, I can always remove it. The second trick is it works well to make a sort of cone with the tip of the earbud at the tip of the cone with a lot of material toward the back. So the back of the earbud has a lot of silicone behind it. We're gonna press that material into the ear. So the tip of the cone goes into the ear canal and then that mass of material that's built up behind, that gets mashed down into the outer ear to make the shape we need to have it fit securely. And at that point, we're done. It, I just smooth it and try to get a nice clean finish at the outside. This sometimes takes a couple tries, but that's okay. We have at least one try for each ear extra beyond this material. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to cure. And once it does, it can be removed from the ear and you can pick any little bit of residual material out of that ear opening. And that's it. That's a custom molded silicone earbud. So for convenience sake, I bought this mold it kit it contains a impression material and a casting material. I'm pretty sure that's an alginate and a gypsum plaster respectively. And I am going to use the proportions that they provide for all my measurements, but it's nice to have everything come in one kit and you can get these on Amazon. So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna use an alginate impression material from my kit to make an impression of my ear. To do that, we're gonna need a little bit of a plastic outer mold to hold that alginate. And so I'm gonna cut this plastic cup to size and that's gonna be the form for the ear impression. Just to be clear, I'm using the part of the cup that's open on both sides and that's going to fit around my head like this. Okay. We're also going to use that bottom part to hold the impression material while we're mixing. To do that, we're going to get 
the appropriate mass of the impression material, alginate, and mix that with the appropriate volume of water. They give you a ratio to make the whole package, so I'm using a tenth of the package and a tenth of the volume of water uh, to hydrate the alginate. Now that I have the right volume and mass of alginate, I'm going to mix them in this measuring cup using a rubber spatula. I'm going to try to sort of press the spatula to break up any clumps, and it takes a while to start to set after it's fully mixed, so I'm not too concerned with setting early. Mostly I just want to make sure that I've got a good homogeneous liquid and not a clumpy slurry. Once I have that all mixed up, I'm going to pour that into my ear. And you'll see why I needed this round piece of cup. That's going to hold the mold so that it builds up to an acceptable volume above my ear. Now this first time I did it, I got a little bit more hair inside the, the mold than I really wanted, it turns out. Uh, so you know, learn from my mistakes. If you're going to make an ear casting, try to get your hair out of there. Also, uh, you can see a tiny bit of my ear poking through the top of the surface. I couldn't see that at the time, of course, uh, and that wasn't ideal either. It doesn't really matter because the part of the ear that we're trying to mold or take an impression of is actually the, the inside of the outer ear, and so it's, it's not a problem if you don't get the full ear. Now, I did not use all of my alginate for this. I left a little bit in the cup, and I can turn the cup back and forth and see if that's solidified yet, and that tells me whether I'm done and can set up. The whole thing does take maybe 10 minutes total to solidify. You want to make sure it's totally done before you set up to take this off. So you know it's done when you can tilt this and it doesn't run, which is nice because you can see that even when your head is on the table. So once it's there, you can sit up and you can see that it's, uh, it's pretty stable. And now the trick is to unmold it. And last time I did it for this ear, I ended up with uh, alginate in my hair and that did not demold easily. You can still see it flipping out there. All right. So this time I'm going to try again. Last time I was able to sort of pull the alginate out of the cup. <laughs> so now I have this stuck to my head. And now the trick is, can I... Yeah, I got it in my hair. I'm going to try to get my hair out of it this time before I try to take my ear out. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I got, it. I got a lot of hair in there. Okay, let's try this again. If you have long hair, uh, I really I don't know what to tell you about how this might work. So I'm going to turn my head this way. There we go. <laughs> Find that kind of gross for whatever reason. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, there it is. An ear cast. Now, with the alginate detached from my head, I could trim it up with a dull knife and just remove the outer edges and leave the parts we're really interested in. It trims really easily with a dull knife. Then I cut another one of these low plastic cups to hold the alginate impression so that we could cast that in some gypsum plaster. Now to make the gypsum plaster we do not want to use a glass measuring cup to hold that because it will stick to everything. It's going to stick to this towel, it's going to stick to my utensil which is a plastic disposable spoon, it's going to stick to the cup in which we mix it, so use things you can throw away. Weigh out your gypsum I've calculated that I'm going to do a quarter of what they provided in the kit with a quarter of the volume of water that they recommend. Pour your gypsum uh, plaster solid and your water into a cup and mix. Once that's totally homogeneous, pour that over the alginate impression and allow it to sit for about 45 minutes in order to set. Now I've tried it both pouring the 
plaster over the alginate impression and I've tried lowering the impression into the plaster and I found that both worked reasonably well as long as the alginate didn't float to the surface too badly. Now once your plaster is fully set and you've removed it from the mold and you've removed it from the alginate you end up with something like this. I gave this a quick spritz with Pam, uh, just a little thin oil to help any mold release when we're done. We don't want our silicone to stick to this plaster. At that point, the whole process is very similar to what you do with your own ear. It's just that you can see what you're doing. Take the two parts of the silicone earbud earplug material, divide that into the proportion, I use a fourth, of what they provide and then I am going to mix those just as before and use those to build an earbud just as before. Now the only big upside about using plaster instead of your own ear is that you could use something like epoxy resin or other polymer that you just can't use in contact with flesh and that would be very possible using this plaster mold. So I have made both types of earbuds uh, this is the second one I made. This is from a casting of my ear. It, I'm sure you can't see that it's how it fits exactly, but it's, it's a little loose, which might be fine for some uh, applications where you want to have a little bit of the ambient noise around you actually get through. This is the version that I made where I just mashed it into my head. And this one actually fits more tightly. It gets a better seal. It blocks out more ambient noise. I would describe this one as really effective, whereas the other one was marginal. Uh, so bottom line, I actually recommend the quick and dirty method to get better results. So I hope you found that fun. Uh, this has been Peter Allen for the Allen Lab. Let me know if you try this and if it works, and I will see you next time.